Thank you, Mary Clark. What a wonderful way to start this Easter morning of celebration. The choir will now sing, I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary.
It is a wonderful thing to be with all of you for Easter this morning. Um, I, I, the whole time we were preparing for Easter, I kept thinking, this is a day of testimony. Um, it's the songs that we sing, the play, hymns that Mary plays, it all speaks of what happened that day so many years ago. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to share that with you this morning. We are going to make introductions of those who are present with us this morning. We have Ellen Craig, who is here in the meeting house, and Suzanne Weber, yay! It's good to have Suzanne back. And Kay and Tony Mindenhall. We have Doug Baker, who is here. We have Cleo and Diana, we're glad to see you. And Norma, it is wonderful to see Norma Ludi and her daughter, Beth Craig. Thank you both for being here this morning. We have Rob and Val Pearson who are with us this morning. We have Brian Lilly and Michelle Lilly. We have Dennis Engel. We have Doug and Kathy Simmons. We have Dave Longnecker. We have Janet Ross and Sharon Reinard. We have Missy and uh, Susie Turner. Thank you guys for being here this morning. We have Kendra Holliger, yay, back from, back from Ecuador. It's good to see you this morning. We also have um, Norm and Karen Peters and Marsha Holliger. We have uh, Kathy Burton and uh, Mary Clark and Ron and I. On Zoom this morning, we have Dwight Ferguson from Bella Vista, Arkansas. Welcome, Dwight. We have Cliff Painter from California. Welcome, Cliff. And it's colder in California than it is here. That's an amazing thing. <laughs> We have Bill and Joyce Wagner from Muncie, Indiana. Welcome, Bill and Joyce. We have Lois Hoag from Sarasota, Florida. Welcome, Lois, it's good to see you. We have Pat Engel from Winchester. It's good to see you, Pat. We have Delmer Ferguson from um, Overland Park, Kansas. Welcome, Delmer. We have Nancy Wolf, who is here with us from Greenfield, Indiana. Welcome, Nancy. And Jeff Clark, who is here with us from Winchester. Welcome, Jeff. And Pat Denny, you have to be in St. John still, because I see that beautiful, I be, that beautiful sea behind you. So wel welcome, I'm glad you were able to join us this morning. And we'll look forward to having you back, but enjoy your time there. Thank you. We have uh, Nita Burton, who is here with us from um, probably Indianapolis. So Nita, it's good to see you this morning. And we have Keith Kendall, who is here with us from Friends Fellowship down in Richmond, Indiana. Welcome, Keith. And Stan Hendrickson, we're glad to have Stan and Gretchen Hendrickson here with us this morning. Thank you for being present. 
and we have Becky Edmonds who is here with us and Nate from um, Deerfield, Indiana. Welcome Nate and Becky. And we have Angela Ferguson from her house in Raytown, Missouri. Welcome Angela, it's good to see you. And we have Terry Reinard who is here with us from his house just outside of Winchester. Yep, I got that right. Okay. <laughs> um, we have Charlie and Valerie Boyd who are here with us from Wichita, Kansas. Welcome Charlie and Valerie, it's good to see you. And we have Tony and Marcia Critch from their home here in Winchester. Welcome Tony and Marcia. And we have Shane Hall who is here with us from Indianapolis. Welcome Shane. It is wonderful to see all of you here this morning. Thank you for being present. Now Ron will lead us in a hymn. If you would, please find a hymnal and turn to number 216 in the hymnal, Christ Arose. Mary played this as part of her prelude, so now we'll sing it and get the lyrics as well. And we really, if Christ arose, so should we. So if you can stand, if you're able, please do. to that hymnal we're also going to sing number 302 I mentioned this in what we sent out last night it asks one of our queries for us how are you showing people that Christ is real to you so let's sing number 302 share his love together
Thank you very much. To begin this morning, I would like to read from Luke 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the, woman, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were there and wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you when he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all of those things to the eleven and to the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now, that same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they walked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all people. The chief priests and, their, and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we have hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it, was, it is the third day since this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision from the angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all of the prophets, he explained to them what was told in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if they were going together. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and, they disappeared, and then he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning when it, when he within us when he was talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us they got up and returned at once to jerusalem where they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying it is true the lord has risen as and has appeared to simon then the two told what had happened on their way and how jesus and how jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread Kathy and Michelle, Kathy Simmons and Michelle Lilly will be sharing a song with us this morning. Thank you. 
Thank you. Because, Pam, and I have been around for so long, I know that I've told you this many times before, but I'm going to tell you one more time. Easter only comes once a year, you know. Thank you for singing that song. I don't know about you. I hear that, and I am instantly back in Soroti, Uganda, in the early 90s with a rebellion going on in the northeast part of Uganda. The people of Soroti trying to survive, being picked off by rebel ambushes along the road all the time. Guys riding bicycles just shot right off of their bicycles, robbed, um, if not killed. We were supporting a technical um, workshop there just to employ some guys, but also to try to address some of their true social needs in that area. We were teaching guys how to grow sunflowers and squeeze the seeds to make sunflower oil that they could sell and raise significant amounts of money to put their kids through school and things. So our responsibility was to drive up there once in a while and check on our volunteers who were there leading that project and helping those guys. And it was a little harrowing driving up there through rebel territory, knowing that they could jump out from behind the trees just about any time. We went up there and spent a night and then went in for the early morning devotions of this staff in this technical workshop. They, every, I think it was a Baptist group that actually had started this project and we were just helping them and supporting them. And so they had these guys have devotions every day when they showed up to work. And we were in this room with probably 20 or 25 young African guys who sang that song like I've never heard it sung before. We Americans, I don't think, fully appreciate what we're singing when we sing those words. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can go back to work. I can take the risk to go and earn a living to support my family because he lives. I started out the piece that we sent out last night by just telling you that the choir song that we've been practicing for these many weeks has just touched me pretty deeply. And it's that second verse of that thing that I've just been thinking about so frequently. He changed my life completely. A new life is mine. I hope that we can all sing and say those words sincerely and honestly today that we have allowed Christ to change our lives completely, to make the good parts better and to make the bad parts go away. <laughs> That's the gospel in a nutshell. What we sent out yesterday included a reference to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I wanna read those words to you before we begin our time of worship sharing. This is from 1 Corinthians 15. I'll read from the first verse down to about the 19th verse, I think, or something like, or sorry, the 12th verse, rather, not the first verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 12. But if it's preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, then how can some of you say there is no resurrection from the dead? I think it was the Sadducees that were the, the group in Israel, not necessarily in Corinth, but the group in Israel that just denied that there was a resurrection of the dead. So I think that's probably a reference that Paul is making to those guys. So he says, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then even Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and so is your faith. 
More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. And those who also have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. And this verse just ought to grip your heart for a long time. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. I have had dealings with people in multiple places at multiple times who have said, you know, I really like Jesus. I learn about his life and I want to try to replicate the way he lived. It's all good. But he didn't rise from the dead. He was just a good guy. He was just a really smart, wise prophet. But he wasn't raised from the dead. For the Apostle Paul, this passage highlights the fact that the life and death and resurrection of Jesus is the gospel. That is the fulcrum of the spiritual life. If Christ is not raised, then we of all people are to be most pitied. We gather today to celebrate the fact that Christ is real to us, that we know he lives because he lives in our hearts. I hope with all my being that you can say that about your own life today. I wrote about seven changes that I saw in, I, I looked at all four of the gospel accounts of Jesus' resurrection event and looked, tried to look at all of the people that interacted with him in some way in those hours and days immediately after he was raised from the dead to just look at the ways that their lives were changed. And I boiled it down to seven characteristics that stand out to me as I think about those people and how their lives were changed by their encounter with the risen Christ. So that's what I've presented to you to think about. I will just real briefly go over those. The last paragraph of what we sent out last night says that the first one is a spiritual restart or resuscitation. Seems like a great place to start. If you haven't even begun the spiritual life, then it is a place to begin. And if you have drifted away, if you, like William Barber said, are in need of a defibrillator, it is time for spiritual resuscitation. Easter is a perfect time for that to take place. Spiritual restart and resuscitation. Second trait, eagerness to tell other people what's happened. Third trait, deepened spiritual sincerity. The fourth trait is honesty about the danger of sin. The fifth trait, genuine joy and awe in the presence of Christ. The sixth trait, conforming to Christ rather than to the dominant culture. And the seventh trait, a growing and improving discipleship. You don't need to see me. The back of this clipboard is just fine. That last one again, a growing and improving discipleship. Those things happened to the people that met the risen Christ. Our first query is, have they happened to you? Are they happening to you? It doesn't happen all at once. It is a lifelong process. It is a journey of spiritual growth. But those are the things that every one of us should expect to take place in our lives if indeed we have met the living Christ and not just words about him. Very different realities. The queries that we've posed regarding what we sent out are these. We will sing at the close of our service today, he lives. Our query simply asks the question of that chorus, how do you know he lives? Number two, some people say Jesus' resurrection is a myth. Why is it essential to the gospel's message that Jesus rose from the grave? That is the passage from 1 Corinthians 15. Number three, we've already sung, share his love. 
the phrase that says, show the world that Jesus Christ is real to you, what are the best practical ways you and I can do that in our everyday lives? And number four, what other changes to lives besides the seven that I have articulated are natural parts of genuine encounters with the risen living Christ? And an additional one that you are welcome to respond to, what other things come to your heart and your mind as you experience the celebration of Jesus' resurrection? What does Easter mean to you? What has been speaking to you in your soul this Easter season? We'd love to hear about any of your responses to those. We will wait quietly in the Lord's presence. You are welcome to respond to these queries or other things that God puts on your heart. If you are in the room, I'll be moving around with the mobile microphone. If you are online, You'll need to be sure and unmute, and Pam will be here to try to help you. I am so glad you chose to spend this hour of Easter with us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being obedient to Christ as we worship him together. Kathy and Michelle made me go back a few years in my, in my mind with the song, Because He Lives. 25 years ago, this young lady sitting beside me was a new baby. And I was holding her when that song, we sang that song. And 
God has been with her and God has worked through her lives. And I'm so thankful for that. But it brought back such sweet memories. Thank you. With respect to question or query number two, why is it essential to the gospel's message that uh, Jesus is risen and that it is not a myth? Because Jesus is the truth, first and foremost, the life and the way. And we depend on the honor. We depend on that truth. Otherwise, we have nothing. And like Paul said, and yet we do not have nothing. We have something great, something that is transcendent, that is very difficult for people to accept, perhaps in their mundane and daily lives. But those that do accept it gain an inner strength. With respect to number four, what other changes to lives are natural parts of genuine encounters with the risen living Christ? There is a courage, as you stated, found in those men that sang that song that moved you so deeply. There was a courage in your actions that you knew that even if you shook off this mortal coil, that there was still something waiting for you, that this is not all there is. Mm -hmm. And from that comes a strength to act, to serve, to sacrifice, to suffer, even unto death for one another. Thank you. Bear and I, too, have been walking down memory lane, and it would have been about 25 years ago that uh, at the time I was a photographer and photographed a lot of weddings over the years. And there are all kinds of memories from, from each of those weddings, but the most memorable uh, reception was at a Baptist church. Uh, the wedding was beautiful. It's a nice new church, and and so we're down in the basement and they've served the meal and then they had an open mic and anybody could get up and talk about the couple that wanted to. And it was about an hour, maybe an hour and a half of just absolute fun stories of these two from college. It was very entertaining. At the end of it, her dad stood up and he did not look like a public speaker. He looked like he was more uncomfortable even than I am right now. <laughs> but he he stood and he, he read several scriptures. And then he talked about being in the Navy and how the Navy has very strict rules about who is in charge of the ship. And the captain, as long as he's on the bridge, he's in charge and everybody does what the captain says. But when the captain needs to leave the bridge, he can turn to the next ranking officer and announce to everyone 
that the first officer has the con. And the first officer has to reply that he has the con and that acknowledges to everyone that he's now in charge. Then he went back to reading scripture about marriage and husband and wife and talked about uh, when he got married and talked about having kids and watching her grow up, knowing that this day was coming and how he was honored to turn to his new son-in-law and announce, you have the con. I'll never forget, one, how the entire room was just bawling their eyes out. I missed the picture of him hugging his new son-in-law. But the, the, just the weight and the importance of of his acknowledgement and his passing of, of that authority. And I read the fourth query and I think that is what we each uh, experience when we encounter the risen living Christ as we acknowledge that he has the con. Thank you. I suppose it's more symbolic than anything, but um, we often associate spring in a sense with Easter, with a breaking forth of new life and all of its beauty of nature. But um, on Thursday night, March 14th, a horrendous tornado ripped through Parker Winchester. And um, five days later was the first day of spring. And as people were still walking through the rubble and searching for this or that, I wonder if some of them didn't say or ask, and this is spring? <laughs> and this is spring? Yes, spring sometimes brings the bad with the good. And I really appreciated the song that the two ladies sang today because, you know, the verse, uh, the chorus begins, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Now, it continues, because he lives, all fear is gone, and I'm not sure. I can always sing and say that if a really bad storm is hanging around, but because he lives, 
I can face tomorrow. And that's kind of the secret of Easter for those who claim his name. Even though they walk through the rubble and the devastation of a storm, they can face tomorrow. I really appreciate the emphasis that Ron has placed on these points that, you know, Easter is for every day. And every day, as we face a new day, we can face unpredictable problems, even storms. But the truth is really simple, if not profound. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And that's not something everyone can say and sing if Christ is not living in their heart and surrounding their presence. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Thank you. All during Jesus' ministry, he relayed the message to all the people. But it went right over their head. And they wound up nailing him to the cross. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do.
And after that, he arose from the grave and he promised his spirit. He is with us every day, all day, every minute. And there's no clearer, no clearer realization to that than when that tornado went through Winchester. Mm. If God isn't in our life every day, every moment of every day, Guess who moved? He doesn't break his promises. I know he lives. I don't see him visibly, but I see him all around every day. Thank you. In order not to steal anyone's opportunity to speak and obey the Spirit of God, we'll wait just a couple of more minutes. You are most welcome to speak out as you are led. Many years ago, I began to learn about dynamics of what happens to icebergs when they break up. You hear it's called the icebergs are calving. I'd heard about it and I thought I understood what it was all about. But I recognized it when I saw it even. Felt that familiar with it. But oh, my friends, until I was actually there, saw it and heard it, felt it and lived it, I had no idea the power, the very essence of what was going on there. It became a part of me. People who lived around there Indigenous peoples called it the white thunder. And I could tell you all about it, but until you've experienced it for yourself. It's a lot the same way with Jesus. I can tell you from my heart what I learned, what I felt, what I knew from the past, what others have told me about Jesus. Oh, until he came into my life, became a part of me. And no concept. He lives within my heart. I can share it with you. I can tell you about it. 
We can urge you to find him for yourself. But until he lives within you, you can't share in the same way. I urge you to draw close to him and let him draw close to you. Thank you, Terry. Perhaps the best way to wrap this up is to sing what Terry just talked about. This is number 220 in the hymnal. I gotta go grab my hymnal. Hang on. He lives, number 220. And if you would, let's stand, give you a chance to stretch. Here in the room anyway, he lives. I serve a risen Savior. going to ask that you bear with us just for a moment. If the chime choir would go ahead and get in position. I'm going to quickly give these announcements while they're getting ready. They've all got it on paper, so they don't need to hear it. But you all who don't have it on paper will clue you in. This week, on Monday, the 1st of April, there will be basket making class at 1.30 in the Annex. So don't miss that if you're making a basket. Tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, the Ministry and Oversight will meet by Zoom. So be sure and note that that's a week late because of activities last week. On Tuesday this week, the 2nd of April, the USFW will meet at 2 o'clock here at the meeting house. Ladies are all welcome to come and join. On Wednesday, <coughs> pardon me, Wednesday the 3rd of April, there will be intercession salad supper at 5.30 p.m. at the Parsonage. 
That will be followed then by April's monthly meeting for business at seven o'clock by Zoom, or you can come sit with us at the Parsonage. There will not be any Sunday school Zooms this Wednesday evening. On Thursday, the choir and chiming choirs both will practice 6.30 and 7.15 p.m. And next Sunday, we'll be right back here, the same place in the same manner, uh, 10 o'clock next Sunday morning for a meeting for worship sharing. We hope that you will come and hope you'll bring a guest. I, I got to tell the people online that this is just clever. You'll see it tomorrow if we email it out to you. But the first item of announcement on here is gastronomy and astronomy. Just a little wordplay here. Easter scones will be served over there in the parlor as soon as the chiming choir has played the Easter song. So please stick around if you can and have a pastry and fellowship. While you're there, don't miss the artwork that has been provided for us by Nancy Wolf for the eclipse coming up. She's been thinking about this eclipse for a long time and she's been producing art and it's really quite spectacular. So please don't miss that. And don't miss Rob Pearson's silver Easter basket over there full of Quaker products, Quaker oats and other kinds of things. Rob did that all by himself. And a, and a nice fancy machine that he bought recently. So stick around after we're done playing over here in just a second because there's lots still to see and experience. There is an offering plate on the table over there in case you would like to contribute to the ministries of Winchester Friends Church. Um, and we'll just remind you that the trustees are planning a spring work day that will be on Saturday, the 13th of April. There will be a free breakfast at eight o'clock that morning and then we'll do some work till about lunchtime there won't be free lunch as far as I know, but there will be breakfast anyway, and you can eat a lot for breakfast. So that's what's on our announcement sheet today. Please stay with us. The choir is going to play Easter song, and I think Pam has put the lyrics somewhere. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to do that because I will get it wrong.
Just before we go, I want to review these prayer concerns real quickly. And we'll have prayer and we'll dismiss. Susan Simons is still at Carmel in the hospital recuperating after heart valve and pacemaker replacement surgeries this past week. She really hopes to be home very soon, maybe as early as tomorrow. So please be continuing to pray for Susan Simons. Susie Turner is with us today. We're very thankful she was hospitalized last weekend for a digestive system problem and is able to be with us today. So give thanks for that, but continue praying for her. Pray for Gretchen Hendrickson, who I would assume has been there with Stan this morning. She is receiving attention from specialists regarding a back problem, and I know that she will appreciate your continued prayers for her. Same goes for Charlie Boyd back in Wichita, Kansas. He is receiving medical attention for a faulty heart valve and other problems that are contributing to that. So please pray for Charlie and Valerie. And Janet Ross's son, Zane Ross, had some very painful and extensive dental surgery this past week that has proved very hard to recover from. So please be praying for Zane Ross. Deborah Lilly is scheduled for uh, chemo and immuno infusions this week on Monday and Tuesday for the cancer that she is currently being treated for. Please pray for Deborah as she goes through that this week. And pray also for Candy Carr, who is Nancy Wolf's friend in Columbus, Indiana. Um, for Mike Murphy, who is the Edmund's son-in-law, and James Lewis, who is a friend of Susan Weber's over in Union City, and all others that you are aware of who are receiving treatment for cancer. Please also pray regularly for our friends and family members who are in assisted living and nursing facilities. It is a difficult thing for them. Please pray that they will sense God's presence with them, and especially be praying in these next weeks for those from Summers Point who have been displaced by the tornado, also those at Randolph Nursing Home, um, because they are still in a kind of state of limbo and it's just very difficult. So be praying for all of them. Pray for everyone in our community who continues to work hard to try to recover after the massive damage caused by that tornado on the 14th of March. And as always, we do again ask that you pray for peace in a world that just can't seem to find it. Point them to Christ and let them know that's where peace is found, the risen Savior. If there are urgent concerns that you need added to this, you're welcome to speak them now or you can email them to me. Are there any things that should be spoken before we close? I don't see anything lighting up and no arms are waving. waving. Would you please join me for a moment? We'll offer these things to the Lord and close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this chance to celebrate this important day together with others who love you. Thank you for what this day means in the lives of those who walk with you. To remind us that you rose on that day so that you could arise in our hearts every morning when we open our eyes, that you can live in us, that you can empower us, that you can lead us, you can give us a life that is fulfilling and satisfying, that you will be present with us at every turn, that you will never leave us nor forsake us because you do indeed live in our hearts. We thank you for that miracle. We ask that you would help us as Paul so often wrote, that you will help us to live lives that are worthy of that great sacrifice and that great miracle. We lift these concerns to you today and ask that you would draw close to each person who is on this list and all of those who are on our hearts. That you would help them, that you would be present in tangible, in powerful ways. You would make your love known to them and show it to them by bringing healing and help and strength and encouragement and all the other things that are needed into each one of these lives. We thank you so much for the ways you've helped us in the past. We thank you for your promise that you will help us going forward. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to live this day 
as positive witnesses that you in, indeed live, that you indeed were raised, and that you have given us life and hope, that you have shown us your love. We express that love back to you with gratitude in our hearts for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Thank you, Mary. Couldn't close it any better than that. God bless you all. Happy Easter. Have a wonderful remainder of this day. Go in peace. The Lord bless you.